1971, in the far back corner of Disneyland Park sat a section named Indian Village. The small land was far less popular than the rest of the areas of Disneyland, and park executives were hoping to draw more of the crowds to the park's back corner. Disney was also planning to clone the Country Bear Jamboree, which had opened at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom on October 1st, 1971. Just one week after the Bears' debut, news broke that the audio-animatronic show, along with a new land, would be replacing the Indian Village in Disneyland. The new land was to be named Bear Country. While Disney was creating their own cast of lovable bears, another sloth of furry friends were becoming more and more popular with young children. Zeke and Zeb and Ted and Fred and a bear named Tennessee had nothing on Papa and Mama and Brother and Sister. These were the Berenstain Bears, and they also lived deep in the heart of Bear Country. We're going on a bear hunt. We're gonna catch a big one. I'm not scared, but a beautiful day. We're going on a bear hunt. Inside Bear Country. I'm not scared, just show me the way. Stanley Berenstain and Janice Grant were two young artists who met at a drawing class in the early 1940s. After marrying in 1946 and giving birth to their son, Leo, in 1948, the two illustrators ventured into the world of publishing. In 1951, they released Berenstain's Baby Book, a comical book for couples navigating the waters of parenthood. The Berenstains continued to produce more adult-oriented fare, such as the Loverboy trilogy, including the interesting Office Loverboy, a collection of comics depicting the rampant workplace harassment of the early 60s and mid-forever, with a funny and sexy approach. For instance, how to tell what happened at the office today without asking. A service for wives whose husbands probably wouldn't tell them the truth anyway. Made a pass at secretary, didn't get to first base. Made a pass at secretary, got to first base. These books were either gripping satirical takes on the problematic climate of the corporate workplace, or they weren't, in which case, wow. After their scorched earth approach to adult comics, the Berenstains turned their attention to family advice literature. They decided that for their next novel, a family of bears would make the perfect protagonists. Bears were cute, easy to draw, and had a very lovable appeal. The couple sent their manuscript to the desk of Theodore Geisel. After almost two years of notes from the famed children's author, Stanley and Janice published The Big Honey Hunt in 1962 with Seuss and Random House's beginner books. The book starred a family of bears, including Mama Bear, the wisest and strictest member of the family, Papa Bear, the bumbling and goofy father figure, and Small Bear, the child of the family who follows along with his father's shenanigans. In the book, Papa Bear ignores the advice of Mama Bear, who tells Papa to buy honey from the store. The simple lesson of listening to instructions was illustrated when Papa Bear and Small Bear were chased through the woods by a swarm of bees. The bear characters featured in The Big Honey Hunt were only intended to stick around for the one book. Stanley and Janice moved on to start work on a new project featuring penguins, but soon after The Big Honey Hunt's publication, the couple received a call from Theodore Geisel. Using the brilliant and whimsical vocabulary and phrasing for which he became popular, Geisel informed them that, quote, we're selling the hell out of the bear book. Geisel then told them to start work on more books, and without asking, shortened their names to Stan and Jan and named the series Berenstain Bears. The newly named Stan and Jan then set out on a quest to answer the age-old question, can you milk a bear? They would release their second book, The Bike Lesson, in 1964, with many more stories to come. Meanwhile, in Sandusky, Ohio, the amusement park Cedar Point was receiving some major upgrades. In 1965, new family-friendly attractions such as the Space Spiral and the famous Jungle Larry's African Safari opened. Also new that year was a dark ride named Earthquake. Earthquake was a ride transferred from a small park named Freedomland in New York City. The dark ride's premise revolved around the catastrophic San Francisco earthquake of 1906 that killed thousands of people. Told in spectacular color and action, cars on a track would drive guests through the city moments before and during the disaster. Crumbling buildings and cracked cityscapes shook around the guests as they made their way through the expansive dark ride. Earthquake would inhabit a large section of the park's North Lake Erie side, near a mini golf course, the main arcade, and restaurants. Earthquake would continue operation for decades, entertaining guests into the 80s. By 1985, the Berenstains had published over 50 Berenstain Bear books, had produced five television specials, had been developing an animated series for Saturday morning programming, and had even released a video game. People loved the bears, and children especially couldn't get enough of them. Mama, Papa, Brother, and the late edition, Sister Bear, were beloved characters, and the Bear family's home, a split-level treehouse in Bear Country, was a recognized setting in pop culture. Kids across the country were growing up on the lessons taught by the Berenstains. Subject matters range from simple stories such as the consequences of a messy room or eating too much junk food to more controversial topics such as the extent of God's love. 
While the Berenstain Bears were rising to the top of pop culture, the 1906 San Francisco earthquake had been basically forgotten. Cedar Point was looking to renovate Earthquake's ride space into something entirely different, along with other renovations to the park, including the addition of a bobsled coaster named Avalanche Run. Oh, yeah. Much more than one single attraction, Cedar Point wanted to create an entire land that offered engaging activities in an immersive, kid-friendly atmosphere. All they needed was a theme, and fortunately, there was a family-friendly bedtime book series that was steadily rising in popularity across the nation. And perhaps the best part, no other theme park chain had tapped into the intellectual property. While Knott's Berry Farm in California used the Peanuts characters for their children's land, Camp Snoopy, and Worlds of Fun in Kansas City, Missouri used Sam Panda with their children's land, Pandemonium. No park had licensed the bears, so in the early 80s, Cedar Point did just that. The park created walk-around characters based off of the famous bears, and they began to develop a land to take the place of the earthquake attraction. With a generous $500,000 budget, Cedar Point set to work making Bear Country a real place. By June of 1985, Bear Country was a fully realized and fully developed land with windy pathways and wooded scenery. The grand opening took place on June 29, 1985, with Stan and Jan in attendance. On that morning, Mama, Papa, Brother, and Sister took their places at the front of Cedar Point to march with the Cedar Point Beach Band and Stan and Jan into Bear Country. After they officially opened the land to the public, Stan and Jan stuck around to sign autographs and read stories. Berenstain Bear Country was officially open, and the young guests of Cedar Point began to flock to it. Have you seen where the Berenstain Bears live at Cedar Point? It's Berenstain Bear Country, a very special place where you can read books, listen to tapes, and play games with all your favorite Berenstain Bears. Berenstain Bear Country at Cedar Point. When it opened, Berenstain Bear Country was a completely indoor playland featuring recreations of such classic Berenstain Bear locations as the Bear Tree House, the Old Bee Tree, and Spook Hill. The area also featured the actual factual science fair, a museum with exhibits and experiments to teach kids the inner workings of electricity, telephones, and magnetic fields, and the Bear Country Library, which had a variety of activities such as reading and coloring. Story time could be found at Skull Rock, and the bears could be seen running around and playing with children. The goal with Bear Country wasn't just to bring to life the lovable world of the bears, but to do so in the spirit of the books. Just as the Berenstains wrote their stories with lessons in mind, Cedar Point put a strong focus on education, storytelling, and lesson learning into Bear Country. Cedar Point's initial Berenstain Bear Country entertained guests for seven years, before being greatly expanded in 1992 with a large outdoor play area, replacing the Sky Slide and Mini Golf Course. The new area, six times the original size of Berenstain Bear Country, featured new attractions such as a larger family treehouse, a dinosaur pit where kids could dig for fossils, the Bear Country Railroad, the Bear Country Boys Club, the spooky old tree slide, a rocking patio, and other playground equipment. With Bear Country bringing young guests into Cedar Point, Cedar Fair, Cedar Point's parent company, was ready to capitalize on its success elsewhere. At the time of Bear Country's expansion in 1992, Cedar Fair operated three parks, Cedar Point in Ohio, Valley Fair in Michigan, and Dorney Park in Pennsylvania. Both Valley Fair and Dorney Park would be given their own Berenstain Bear countries. Valley Fair's addition cost an estimated $1.9 million to build and opened in 1994. Berenstain Bear Country at Dorney Park cost an estimated $2.5 million to build and opened in 1995. A spokesperson for Dorney Park said that it was, quote, the first multi-purpose attraction for children in that age group to open in the past decade at a major theme park in the Northeast. Finally sticking it to all the other single-purpose attractions for children in that age group that had opened in the past decade at a major theme park in the Northeast. The Berenstain Bear Country sections at both Valley Fair and Dorney Park would be close to identical to Cedar Point's, with few attractions being added or removed from the layout. Dorney's promotions focused on their Bear Museum and Computer Cave, which gave young guests the opportunity to use touchscreen computers that offered coloring games or taught lessons about recycling. Also, the actual Factual Science Fair at Dorney was changed to the actual Factual Science Mobile, here, kids could press buttons that would spark electricity between two poles, pedal bikes that would charge light bulbs, or learn about gravity through a classic coin whirlpool. There was also the office of G. Grizzly MD, which offered health science exhibits where children could measure their own heart rate and height, weigh themselves, and conduct fake x-rays. Scattered throughout bear country were telephones that children could pick up and listen to stories from different members of the bear family. In 1995, the same year Dorney's Bear Country opened, Cedar Fair would acquire another park, Worlds of Fun in Kansas City, Missouri. Cedar Fair immediately started improving the park, adding new rides and opening another Berenstain Bear Country in 1997 in place of the park's pandemonium section. Cedar Fair was more like Cedar Bear. 
The interactivity and focus on education in the Bear Countries across Cedar Fair's theme parks were unlike any other theme park attractions for kids at the time. Where most child play areas would only offer physical activities like playgrounds and jungle gyms, Bear Country aimed to provide a fully immersive experience. Bear Country taught lessons, it told stories, and it sparked young imaginations. While Berenstain Bear Country continued to entertain guests across the country, Cedar Fair continued to expand. In 1997, the company took a huge step forward by acquiring Knott's Berry Farm in Buena Park, California. This gave Cedar Fair their first year-round amusement park, and Knott's Berry Farm came with a tradition of great entertainment and theming. It also came with Camp Snoopy. Knott's also had an agreement with the Mall of America, which had its own indoor Camp Snoopy. Due to this, Cedar Fair decided not to extend its licensing agreement with the Berenstains, instead opting to build Camp Snoopies in all of their regional parks. 1998 would be the final season for Berenstain Bear Country at Cedar Point, and the Peanuts characters would arrive to greet guests at Camp Snoopy the following season. Charlie Brown, Snoopy, Peppermint Patty, and Lucy officially replaced the Bear family for meet and greets. The Bear Country Railroad became Peanuts Express, and more rides were added to the area, including Balloon Race, Peanuts 500, Red Baron, Snoopy Bounce, and even a roller coaster called Woodstock Express. It wasn't long before Cedar Fair's other theme parks followed suit, and by the mid-2000s, every Bear Country had transitioned into Camp Snoopy. New Berenstain Bear books are still being published today. While the Bear family is no longer in the limelight, generations of children grew up with Stanley and Janice's creation, in books, on TV, and especially in the parks. The Berenstain sections of the Cedar Fair parks became a second home to the young children visiting the land. With fond memories of colorful, larger-than-life, and educational entertainment, there is no doubt that many across the United States wish they could take another hike deep into the heart of Bear Country. Does a bear live in the woods, you know? Can I get some claps and a little banjo? I'll find out the pages straight into your brain. It's the actually, factually family of Berenstain. We got mama, papa, we got sister and brother. The Berenstain bears ain't like no other. But there's more bears in the back, more bears in the front. Follow me now because we're going on a bear hunt.